Welcome to the Alchemy of Ascension Season 2, where we are exploring our galactic origins and becoming multidimensional. I'm your host, Washela Sananda, and it is my great pleasure today to introduce you to a very unique and wonderful individual, William Linville. Welcome, William. Well, thank you, Washela. What a great honor and great, a great privilege it is, and great job with everything. Thank you. I'm so happy to have you here. <laughs> Likewise. So I will just start by sharing a little bit about you. I'm sure many of the viewers are familiar with your work and many may not be. So um, William is a divine presence of clear creator consciousness that has transcended all of the lower levels of the physical form that came with an embodiment which he stepped into on a surgery table in 1996. And what that really means is William is what we know as a walk-in spirit. It. And I'm not sure that we'll get into your origin story, but believe me, it's fascinating. So um, if anybody who wants to know more about that, you can, I'm sure you can find a lot of that online. And um, I heard this story 10 years ago in a conversation that I heard you um, doing on another summit, William, and I've been mm -hmm. just so curious about you ever since. So working beyond space and time, William is presented with your light realms. And um, to assist with releasing and dissolving the density within the physical. And it's important to know that William teaches no belief system and he's not affiliated with any group or organization. William Linville just is. William works with each person or group in their own individual uniqueness for the highest and best good of all concerned. And um, so for starters, I, I'm just, um, I just love the way that you present and teach. And it's so unique to what I hear from, you know, really anybody else out there. So um, because we're talking about becoming multidimensional, which we already are, but bringing that out in us, how do we access our multidimensionality in these physical human bodies? Well, number one, I would ask that you bring your consciousness to the heart. Like even putting your hand there for a minute, just to makes it easier for the epinephrine neurons, makes it easier for feeling and connecting with yourself. And then putting the eyes closed towards the third eye, just really getting, I'll say the mind, but magnetically disconnecting from the ego structures of all the thought forms, perceptions, belief systems, and being able to just take a nice slow breath through the nose, going down into the lower tummy, below the navel, between the navel and the pelvic girdle, and just really concentrating on them for a minute of feeling the oxygenation, the particles of light, technically, that are coming into your physical presence, the physical embodiment, and also bringing life force, creator consciousness, liveliness. And right now, let's welcome in to the rest of you, your higher levels, your creator levels, your manifest levels, to where we could just start to feel the energy within our heart, and more so the presence within your heart, opening, expanding through the front of the body, through the center of the body and behind the body, right through the heart chakra level vortex. And right now, just letting all the thoughts just, you know, they're there, but let's just let them phase out. Let's not grasp onto, let's not identify with, let's do our best not to <clears throat> grasp onto them. Tomorrow will take care of tomorrow. Today I'll take care of today. On and on and on. Nothing right now in this physical form, in this physical world, really even exists. It's all in the mind. It's through everything happening around you and then around the body. Try now, just take another deep breath, letting it all phase out. And as we're letting it phase out, this is where you start to come forth. And now, as we open our eyes, just pick, pick an object, a tree, a box, whatever calls you. And let's just let the eyes go out of focus, just looking around the edge of it. Let's keep them out of focus, and, or we can even use your hand if you want. Keeping it out of focus until you start to see a hue. 
surrounding the picture, the box, or your hand, because the hue <clears throat> is actually its presence. And the more we go here, what we're doing is we're stopping, breaking energy and stopping all thought forms, the running mind, the running ego, which are two separate things. But right now, you're allowing yourself to be free, which in turn is allowing yourself to open and open to all that truly is, rather than everything you perceive to be true about this, true about oneself, true about the male, true about the female, true about finances, environment, on and on and on. Let's just right now, let ourselves be in that state of total openness, because this is where your multidimensionality starts to really come forth. It starts to really open up, because as we have no focus, we start to become more and more radiant, more and more accessible. Technically, you're letting your body come back to the optimum health and well-being. And all the cause, core, the record, in fact, of the memories that created the ego in the first place, the split polarized states. Well, right now, we're just unplugging. So literally, it loses its charge. It loses its hold. And in reality, you start gaining more of yourself your dimensionality, where things are playing out around, things are going on here, things are going on there, but yet you're not boxed in with any tunnel vision, blah, blah, blah. Many ask, how do you do this in your everyday life? It's pretty simple. You get up, you have your coffee, tea, whatever, you hop in the shower, let the body get cleaned. It, but let's be clear, it's the body. And we want to be aware, okay, now we're not putting on our suit of armor to leave the home. What we're doing is take another breath and we're taking our body from point A to point B and all the journey in between. For now, we get to our desk or if you work in your home, you go to your office, whatever it may be for you personally and where we're just bringing our presence there. And now we're taking another breath, letting once again, everything around us be outside and around us as we're also we're there, we may, I mean, obviously we have some sort of purpose, job to do, whatever, but this is where the job becomes easier and easier, more like automatic pilot, because now our presence is there, and now we start to acknowledge everyone around, everything around, things that you normally wouldn't see because you're so preoccupied in the mental level, but then you start to watch how all of it as a matrix, even monads at times, soul groupings at times, where all the magnetics start to dissolve. And now you're right here, wide awake, fully alert. You're right here without any preoccupations. So you're not closing down. If anything, you're opening up. But now you're totally receptive to the rest of your multidimensionality. And then the alchemy, which is the purification of, asc of ascension, which is waking up and rising in vibratory levels and frequencies and megahertz of light. And how we started rising and rising because we don't have any weights drawing us down anymore. Mm. I better clarify that. Yeah, I love that. And thank you for that um, deepening in the meditation. And you know that really helps us get present and always getting into the heart is such a beautiful way to, um, to bring our presence forward. So thank you for that. Um, okay, so from there, I'd, I'd love to hear about um, how can we know or understand our true origins in a, in a better way? And how does, how does that knowing affect us here in these bodies? Well, number one, <clears throat> it affects you in a way of how you address things, why you address things a certain way you do, why you feel the different things that you feel. And when we go here, you know, right now, let's just bring our conscious once again through the heart and feeling it there, feeling yourself there, then up through the throat, through the third eye, through the frontal lobe of the brain, the midbrain, the back of the brain, all the way through the master cell, uh, within the frontal lobe of the brain, going all the way through the crown chakra level vortex, going all the way up through the mass collective consciousness, up through the astral planes of consciousness, through the cosmic lattice work, all the way to the sun. And let's, let's just hold there for a moment, connecting with the sun to where you can start to feel in the body, the eyes wanting to start flickering. And let's just let the eyes flicker. That's the brain wave going into theta. And now let's go beyond theta through the physical sun all the way through 
into and through your central sun intelligence, the rest of your creator beingness, your creator consciousness. And now let's look around. Let's put a door in front of us. Let's walk through that door into your very origin. Because the majority of dear ones here right now, <clears throat> the majority are Pleiadian and Orion. And then we branch out from there right now. Those are very two brilliant places. As we open the door, let's walk through right into those origins. What do you see around you? How's the body receive? How's the body um, re responding? How now is all of the beautiful sense of home? And as we access here, you know, not as a rule, but as a reality, a lot of the ascended host <clears throat> that have come onto the planet and all these dear ones, you know, the majority of them come from Pleiades because it is a realm of mastery. It's a realm of accessing those beautiful particles of consciousness. Even in the evening hours, when you go outside, whether it's on a deck, whether it's in your backyard, the porch, street, whatever, let's just look up for a minute. And let's just take another deep breath. Let's welcome home to you. Let's walk also welcome forth the downloading of data information and codements of consciousness because these areas and these parts of yourself, these spaces and places, they've been waiting to communicate. So now let's just take another breath. Let's welcome forth our true family, well beyond the family monad, biologics, DNA, genetics. Let's go right there with our true family. Throughout the cosmos, throughout all the beauty, now let's just take another breath and once again, let's do our best <clears throat> to not have a locked in focus. That polarizes you, it pushes your family away and makes you very much in the carnal levels here on this planet and through this body. So now when we go into our origins, let's walk through the caves of creation all the way to the back of the caves of creation where we go through the halls of honor and then going beyond the halls of honor into your wide openness, expressiveness, expansiveness, and where we can access and activate the rest of <clears throat> the facets of ourselves, but also the rest of the journeys that we've had, literally blueprinted, imprinted, and so forth, within each and every cell of the body. Because each and every cell has the whole, whole blueprint of the universe. And now we're accessing going through and connecting with our home away from here. And it's interesting because you're not, you're never disconnected from yourself and otherwise, otherwise your body wouldn't be breathing. But yet we're, now we're going deeper, clearer, more direct through these portals of consciousness. And, and we want to put a door there because it's something the mind can register because we want to be able to bring the mind with us, not, not have it go off in La La Land because it is a tool. And now let's just look around, feel around, and watch how the rest of you is coming in, but also how your body is responding to the love, the light beingness, and also the data and information that normally gets downloaded into your crown chakra level vortex. It comes down all the way through your central column, through all these encodements of consciousness that activate, emanate, and also dissolve all the old built up identities, all these old built up emotional calibrational lattice works, that is also the, your ticket to freedom that allows yourself to open up. And then, of course, beyond opening, how we get to watch in a very physical way all the world around us metamorphosizing to best complement you. That was fun. That was fun. <laughs> I always end up going to um, a place that's kind of like water or even not exactly water like we have here, but plasma almost like this. Yeah. 
plasmic and I feel like gills. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the Atlantean roots, which go all the way from Atlantis to Sirius mm -hmm. to Pleiades again. And yeah. Now. Yeah, absolutely. So for you, William, do you have a, a star system or a particular place that you your consciousness feels is home to you? Where do you connect? Sirius. Sirius? Sirius? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can and you Sirius Oh yeah, go ahead. Can you tell us um, something about that and, and what you remember from there or what life is like there? It's just the part I love <clears throat> because right when you started to ask, that whole plane just opened up. So now we're here. This is the key. We're not leaving our body. We're expanding from it. So as I walk around there, it's interesting because it's not your average hypothetical planetary constellation. What it is, is it's more iridescences. It's like you look at the color, what we'd call here emerald, but you look through it and it's each and every particle of it that has different facets, different shards, but all of them matter. They all create the wholeness of the collective consciousness. Now, I have to say, it's... It's a different kind of form because it's not solid, but you can still hypothetically walk on it. And that has to do with vibratory levels. And then you look around, <clears throat> there's the ones that I would call, um, like they wear, they have the appearance of different robes. The majority of the robes look um, purplish, like violet. You look at the faces, and it's not really a face. It's like, it's not a screen either, but if you could imagine the most beautiful crystalline particles that make up a form, no facial features, but if you look at the form, what happens is it's like, it's like watching the star systems out in the middle of space. You see a planet that color, that color. Well, it's like that. All the facets of that crystalline structure are constantly beaming different colors. So it's not like one purple, green, blue. It's all of it combined. And then you go through that. And it's kind of interesting because part of it looks blackish because black <clears throat> is the mixture of all colors. So it brings you right back into, um, into a wholeness where you don't have, like the mind like something specific you can put in a box for clarity and understanding, but this isn't box inable. And so you go through that and you look at all the other dear ones, which I'll call, for the sake of understanding, elders and so forth, and way showers. Well, you go through that to the rest of the civilization there, and that... It presents a lot of high frequencies that almost sounds like laughter, innocence, purity, playfulness. And then you go beyond that and you go into, it's, it's so interesting because one hand, it's not solid, but then it does have, like if you look at it here versus here, okay, here's what's the appearance that you're basically flowing through. Then you have what looks like a water element. And then you have what looks like trees, not like the trees you see here, but let's call it roots, okay? And then, excuse me, here in the center, you have a beautiful ball, if you will, of creator consciousness beingness that it's, it just is isness. It's light beingness. It goes and moves in and out like it's breathing. But it's not really breathing because it doesn't have lungs, but it's constantly metamorphosizing, pulling in, metamorphosizing, growing, which even allows the whole planet to all the particles that make up the solidified, perceptional solidified state. It's like a living, breathing element that continues to expand upon. So you look at solid matter. If you could imagine solid, solid matter going beyond the matter principle, that's why I was asking you to let your eyes go out of focus for a moment, just to see the hue around it. Well, 
the particles that make up the solidified matter, it's like they're growing, expanding, growing, expanding, to where eventually you go to one split particle. And that's what it's like. So, so now you're tuning into one split particle, not the wholeness. It's kind of like on this planet, like you look at one little fragment of the tip of a leaf versus all of creation. And where you can zero in, and then that is also particles with the idea through many beliefs, many identification with the physical realm to give it what I would call a solid appearance. But it's not solid. And there's life beyond life, beyond life, beyond life, beyond light of a, can, a collective of particles of consciousness to give it that a to give it that appearance, but yet when you go further into it, you see that nothing is really solid. Mm. They're all a bunch of particles that have eons and eons of encodements of consciousness within them. And it's part of, part of the fun, you know? It's like, rather than the mind or the ego getting bored. I mean, how could it ever get bored when there's eons to play with, even the particles of a board? You know, so, and it's cool because it always shares with you where it originated, where it began, this whole stream of consciousness right to in front of you where it's, it's emanating such beauty to allow for yourself to be able to acknowledge its presence, vice versa. And then where you start opening further to to dialogues with everything. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you for sharing um, your, you know, where you where you're from and giving us a vision of that. And is there a specific density related to that vision that you just shared? Um, oh, so sweet. What's that? Like what kind of density? Uh, like six? Is it six dimensional or you know we're we're kind of located in the third here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the fifth I, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it, it vacillates from 19 to 21. Really? Yeah. And it's where you, it's interesting because it's like even when you look at travel, like uh, constellation travel, there are crafts, but you get in and it's all, everything there <clears throat> is ran telepathically. So you send a thought to the coordinates, which looks like a ball with on a stand. So the stand looks very milkyish color, um, like kind of like a pearl of essence, but a little bit more milky. And from there, you send a picture to the equipment and it takes you there. It also goes, it's interesting because it's not linear, it's dimensional again. So from here to there, bam, rather than on the planet, from here to England is, I don't know, 10, 12, 15 hours. So, so it's one of those things, you know, where it's you as consciousness that presents uh, being there right there. Now, it's not as evolved as like um, teletransportation. And the part of that is when you're constantly expanding, pulling in, expanding, but yet you still have a certain level of personal identification to where that's where we get into singularity, frequencies and tones, until eventually, you know, and that's where, okay, I'm Will, okay, you're um, with Sheila, and where we're communicating but then you have your journey i have mine or evolvement whatever we want to call it but then the frequencies become intertwined where you take off from there so it's a fun fun journey Indeed. and way of doing things yeah yeah so that kind of leads me into what can we do with you know with our presence these bodies to help us raise our frequency or our vibes here um, so that we can ascend our consciousness and know more of the truth of who we are. Okay, number one, let's go ahead and strip ourselves down. <clears throat> Your body's name is Weishela. <clears throat> you have dark hairs, blue shirt, on and on and on. So let's just take all of that for a minute. Hypothetically, drop it to the ground. 
the mind, its functionability like mechanically or automatic pilot, okay. We're not the mind, let's drop that. We're not the emotions, we're not the beliefs, we're not the judgments. All right, you know what, be gone, be gone, be gone. To where eventually we're not male, we're not female. So okay, that's just plumbing for convenience. Okay, done, done, done. Okay, we're not our belongings, we're not our profession, we're not any of this other stuff. So okay, you know, drop that, drop that. Until finally, we get to you, the real you, where we're not ungrounded, but we're not overly grounded to where the outside world dictates and affects how you feel about oneself and so forth and so forth. So right now, we're going beyond a one self into all the quadrillion particles of yourself. And now, as we do that, let's welcome in more of ourself. I mean, love is you, it's your natural state. All the rest is taught a carnal behavior of mannerisms of how to function in a body on a planet. So let's just allow now our self to come in. And as we do, you know, I'd say the second, the next step would be, I want to know the truth, show me the truth. Not based in beliefs, <clears throat> not based in good and bad. The truth is the truth. There's no way around it. Show me the light in everything. Show me why this dear one's doing that, that one's doing that, blah, blah, blah. And this is where we're unencumbered. Now, as we go here, let's just ask the body to start vibrating faster and faster because it's already started here. And now it can speed up, open up. And technically, we're going through your universal DNA that goes well beyond the double helix strands of DNA, but it affects the double helix strands of DNA and accessing the um, telomere, reverse the aging process. Right now, genetics don't exist for you. And even magnetics don't exist for you. Try so body vibrate faster and faster. And this is where together we're vibrating faster, which is going through ascending in vibratory principles in megahertz of light, where we're ascending and we're ascending to where now we're above all the mass collective consciousness, behavioral mannerisms, even technically above the um, astral planes. For now, we're emanating like a beautiful star within yourself and as yourself. So now we're emanating through the world. We're not absorbing it now. You know, coronas don't exist. None of that exists because right now you're totally immune. Right now we're going beyond the physical, emotional personality and we're going into all that is. So now, all right, speed up faster, buddy. Come on, buddy. Because you're coming from a quadrillion times the speed of light and you're picking up a third dimensional form. So yes, it's a process unless you want your body to explode and, you know, and then the whole journey's over. But from here where we're allowing it to accelerate and accelerate and yeah, things come up, but then to coming up to wave goodbye to, not to re-grasp onto, to process, make another job of. Because this is the part we want to celebrate because now your vibratory levels, there's no way around it. You're speeding up, speeding up, speeding up. And we're letting the world be the world outside of us, letting everything be what it is outside of ourselves. But now we have a whole nother level of consciousness vibratorily to be able to look upon and eventually, you know, marrying your light bodies, your Merkaba, reclaiming your Merkaba, on and on and on, to where from now we can take a breath <clears throat> and we're sharper, we're clearer. And I'd say we're present, but not by work. <clears throat> it's because you're out of space and time. And you become present and your presence. To where now it's so beautiful because this is where you are. You know, family, I want to know what I want. You show me, show me the truth. You know, show me what is. And I see your family speaking of your entourage, your higher levels, greater levels, manifest levels, the angelic heart, angelics in the host realms, on planet and off planet support. To where, you know, where we're really untainted and constantly 
vibrating faster and faster. And then you get to watch how your whole world goes through a major shift. And I will say major shift also includes dear ones moving out, new, new ones from a new paradigm coming in to where you're in the flow of yourself now. Mm. Yeah, I could feel that. Um, thank you. <laughs> and I love your background. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. I've got a pyramid back here. <laughs> I'm looking at that. I can see the edges. It looks awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. So I loved that. And I love, you know, how it's really, it feels like it's so much about just giving ourselves permission and then choosing it and then going there and doing it and allowing, you know, and, and um, I mean, for many of us, the first step in that is just allowing ourselves to believe it's possible. Um, but the, yeah, and which is why the guided meditations and things are so helpful because it helps to have someone leading us on these journeys. Um, so I'd love to pivot a little bit because we're in such interesting times right now. And, you know, we've, I've been hearing any number of things. Uh, we hear it called the shift, the ascension, the new earth, um, the Aquarian age. Can you speak into a little bit about what is happening on planet earth right now in this uh, unique time? Well, in this unique time, you're watching the planetary grids, the gold magnetic grids. And it's interesting because it's not just one layer. It goes all the way through the whole consolidated matter of the whole planet. The planet is purging all of its souls that have been lingering. It's purging the astral planes. It's purging the oceanic realms. It's purging nature. And this is, you know, it's pretty awesome because remember <clears throat> for the last few years, you know, many, you know, save the whale, save the dolphin, save the white oaks or whatever. Well, you're watching it go through a breakdown and regeneration. So all the damage that has been done per se, it's all coming up, being dissolved, fracking and all that fun stuff. And it's all being dissolved, exposed, and the planet is literally purging itself of all of these heavier densities, all of the heavier emotions, even the soul journeyers that get kind of stuck, that got stuck in between realms. It's also dissolving everything that's ever played out in a body on a planet since first separation. So, you know, <clears throat> you watch it all the way from the dinosaur age and how they fertilize the planet, blah, blah, blah. Well, you're watching this giant Eden come back into harmony and you're watching all the emotional states from those that are in a body, physical, mental, emotional, soul level, Akashic record realm levels, old heavy energies that they bought into, hook, line, sinker in. Well, you're watching all of that those are saying, okay, I'm crossing the finish line. I'm done with why I came here in a body on a planet. So they're leaving the planet, making a full transition, which in turn is allowing for the light beingness here to amplify more and more in the new paradigm, new dear ones coming in. I say new, not that there haven't been, I mean, they are consciousness. They have been journeyers. So just other places coming in. And that's where we get into the crystalline uh, offsprings, uh, Pleiadian indigos, on and on and on, and rainbow offsprings. Well, yeah, that's coming in very quickly, but then it, it's like a clearing the decks of all the old energies, density, gunk, tar, stagnation, and like being like a hamster on a wheel, repeat, repeat, repeat. That's being purified and divinitized. And that's why you're looking at so many dear ones stepping on the planet, I'm sorry, stepping off the planet so rapidly. You know, you go into uh, floods, rain, fire, whatever it may be, or COVID-19, coronas, and um, cancer a couple years ago. That was the biggest and latest biggest thing. And then there was all these other, it's almost like cancer was contagious back then. And and then you had the AIDS, AIDS epidemic before that, on and on and on. Well, in HPV, HIV, well, those are doorways for dear ones to step out. Literally, you can just 
snap your fingers and step out. But it's like an unraveling of the mind and the mind in yourself, sitting back, day hours, sleep hours, going through life reviews to let all that gunk be done to make a full transition. Some are going through that right now as I speak and deciding, okay, you know, rather than dropping the body, I'm going to step back into it and go quicker than ever. So that's where you have, it's called hypothetically remissions and all of that, but it's really, okay, I'm going to jump back in. I have everything to gain, nothing to lose, and merging into a new paradigm. But then you look at the planet regenerating itself or herself where there's been all these worries, all these fears, running out of resources, and we're all going to move to Mars or something. Well, you know, I, I'm still wondering if you sit at a bus stop or have your hitchhike. Now, from here, it's interesting because this is the Earth regenerating its resources, especially right now. And I have so much fun with it watching the lions. I, I saw this beautiful picture with a lot of lions laying on a road, just sleeping on the road, doing their thing, enjoying the warmth. And bears are coming out. I saw a clip last night of a family having a picnic at a cabin with a bear sitting there with them. You know, and they fed the bear, you know, like some kind of grain or something. But it's interesting because, you know, some places over in Norway, it's being totally repopulated. The sheep are taking over the city, you know, which is pretty awesome because it's recreating a communion of ecology to let it really be more of a mutual honoring and the butcher houses, blah, blah, blah. You know, so many of them being exposed, going out of business to where we're bringing it back into, once again, it goes beyond humane. It goes into a mutual honoring, much like in the outback of Australia, the aboriginals, they bless the animal who crosses their path. And there's a mutual agreement. The animal crosses their path knowing full well it's going to assist our bodies with sustenance. So it's a, it's a marriage of all of it. And same with veggies. And now the big thing is by organic, no pesticides, which is awesome. That's part of the planet's vibratory level, raising and raising to expose all the nonsense, all the prior harm, litter, blah, 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 to where it's coming up to a state where it's more and more fluid, and conscious from the heart of how we can all come together. That includes every culture, color, and creed, every continent. We don't have all these invisible lines called borders where we all get to come together as a whole. You have gifts, I have gifts. How best can we come together to complement? Not all this carnality and survival of the fittest stuff anymore. Yes, love that. Um, I had some noise outside, so that was just perfect timing. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the weed, the weed whacker guy out there. <laughs> um, so I loved all of that, and and so that kind of brings me to that's happening on a planetary level. So what can we do on a physical, like our physical, emotional level of um, like clearing out that old stuff and 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 purging some of those lower frequencies for ourselves? Is there a a technique that you can um, share, or just your thoughts and ideas on how we can do that for our bodies? Well, let's go ahead and take a breath real quick. And let's very purposefully take the mind and the ego. The mind's your friend, the ego's the one with all the issues. Let's just for a minute put it outside of yourself. For a minute, let's just really feel you. You, it's almost like there's a sound of silence and it becomes quieter and quieter. And due to your dimensionality, after that comes more noise. That's a sub psyche. So let's just let that, you know, we can undecide the decisions we've made about ourselves, hypothetical reality, third dimension, on and on and on. Let's just let that phase out as well. And right now, let's really use our mind as a tool, which is why it's there. And now, as we use our mind as a tool, let's ask it. Mind, 
I would like for you to begin finding the beauty or the light in everything. Find your new job is if you see the mom or grandma or whatever, I really want you to find the light within them. I really want you to show me their beauty. No more walls, no more separations. And the part I love about this is your biggest nemesis is going to present, arise, come back into your live stream from nowhere, hypothetically. And let's look at the hypothetical nemesis. It's where it gets challenging for the ego. I want you to find the beauty. Also, the innocence within the dear one that is standing before you. Because in reality, it's just a scared child. So now, mind, I want you to show me what's really there. Because now we're opening up compassion, understanding. We're no longer empathizing or sympathizing, which unfortunately is a back door to take on their gunk. Compassion is where, hey, gosh, I really wish it, what that wasn't happening. Let me know if you'd like things to change beneficially. Where the, that's the heart, not only the mind. And then mind, you know, I want you, I'm going to send you on a little vacation to, I really want to know why I do what I do when I do it. I want to know, body, why you squirm when the employer is coming around or the boss or whatever. You know, my, I want you to find that fear. Because it's no more, no less. Like they have the ability to take away your livelihood on and on. Well, not really. They cannot like you. So let's just take a breath. And then let's look for that innocent child who behaves this way, that way. And all right, mind you, know, show me even why they behave that way for my own clarity of understanding. And, you know, in the morning, all right, family, entourage, the guidance rooms, show me what today looks like. At bedtime, I bless this day, it is done. Because that's where when we begin the day, we started off awake. And all right, I'm awake, now keep me awake. And show me all the gifts this day has to offer. And it's where, you know, we're no longer like in a stream of consciousness of get up in the morning, do your thing, go to work, come home, do your thing, go to sleep, and clear out all the stuff you did the day prior, and then start again the next day. So we want to start breaking that up because we don't want this stuff working through you every evening when you're attempting to let the body decompress. Because that's when it affects the, you know, the intervertebral disc of the vertebrae. They don't refill like they're created to do. And then we go from there. So, okay, this situation's going on, that situation's going on. But right now, we just take another breath. We repeat to the mind and to yourself as a reminder, none of it is happening to you. None of it is about you. You're the instrument and the conduit there to light it up not it, drag you down into the tar pits. And this is where, you know, we get into, all right, big guns, which your higher levels, it's interesting. So it's higher part of you vibrating at a higher frequency, which goes back to the ascension status, which is coming down and through. And all right, big guns, you know, hello, speak through me, steer me, and journey me. And take a man of my soul, my life, my work, my wealth, my mind, my body, my world, to where... We've started becoming more sharp, more heightened to where we're aware of what's going on in Sirius. We're aware of what's going on universally. We're not preoccupied by it. But when we take that breath and we connect with you, you know, we don't have the wheels running, the cogs moving. We're right there and we become the difference and the amplifier in every situation throughout the day and I, for that matter. And we give the mind a good pat on the back, like a little puppy dog. And because it is like that, it's a tool, but it is your friend, but it's not you. Because as you know, you have a mind and a body that you're in, that you're expressing through, you're emanating through. 
But now we're kind of changing the game to where now it's not your master. You're walking together with all three of you and opening up to so much more. Yeah, the integration. <laughs> yeah, and, the, and then the fluidity that comes with that. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Yes, you've given us a lot of, um, you know, steps toward being, you know, that holding, I suppose would be maybe the better word, um, a more ascended frequency or a more ascended way of being in the body and, um, and envisioning 